Within the very first moments of starting up Wings of Blue Star, you're going to realise this game is a passion project. And that is both its greatest strength and its greatest weakness. Because in those first moments, you will see some detailed and surely highly time-consuming artwork be deposited at a slick-looking title screen, then find you can't move through the menus with your control stick. The best thing about this being a passion project is that you can literally feel that passion. However, the worst thing about it being a passion project is that it has an undeniable air of amateurism to proceedings. The game from Shinu Real Arts and published by East Asia Soft, who kindly supplied my review copy, has clearly had a lot of heart and soul put into its visuals and its character's world and story. There are lots of good ideas and attempts to do things differently in the gameplay too, and the release is packed with little extras and flashes of detail. Amid all the cool and interesting new ideas and mechanics though, are things that don't quite work, but they've still been kept in. There are a lot of strange design choices, and the game suffers from so many quirks and bugs, that it's often hard to tell where one ends and a new one begins. Most of these are nothing more than minor annoyances, and could be looked past easily enough if the game's visuals and mechanics appealed, but there are a couple of more major problems that really hamper player enjoyment and make this a tough one to recommend. Now I'm going to start off by talking about one of these bugs, because it really is a big, big problem. You might have already noticed the issue in some of the footage, but the game at times slows down to a ridiculous degree, becoming borderline unplayable. Boss encounters have countdown timers, or at least they usually do, sometimes they randomly seem to not appear, and so it was easy enough to work out exactly how slow the game runs, which is between two and three times more slowly than it's supposed to. And this, by the way, is not the sort of slowdown that only occurs when the screen gets heavy with bullets and enemies, and then stops and returns to normal. Instead, this is something that once it starts occurring, continues until you shut down and relaunch the game. My experience with it hasn't exactly been consistent, but in general I found I would usually get one solid run in after starting the game up, and then the issue would begin when you started stage one again, forcing you into a hard reset. Some games of course could be kind of playable at half speed, but the issue is further exacerbated in Wings of Blue Star, because this game does throw a fair amount of dead time at the player. The start of stage 1 in particular takes slightly too long to get going at normal speed, but becomes absolutely excruciating when the game is tanking. And it's this overlap of issues that really wears the player down. There are two main types of issue, involuntary bugs and awkward design choices, and I'm just going to list a few here to show you how small though each one might seem in isolation, it is the pileup that overwhelms you. In terms of out and out bugs, I already mentioned the boss timer not appearing, but this can happen with other UI elements too. Sometimes I picked up power-ups but was not granted the associated item. One time I just couldn't move my ship for a long period. In the pause menu I had the controller stuck on a heavy rumble. While playing the boss rush I am certain I dealt way, way over the damage necessary to defeat a boss, but he just kept circling and circling, forcing me to eventually quit out the run. On the awkward choices side of things, we have the fact you can't use the control stick in the menus, menus which confusingly flip the way you move through them depending exactly which one you're in. The high scores are tucked away in the options menu under your profile and scores do not display at first but have to be moved away from then back to to trigger. The speech and the writing in the story mode often don't match up and there are numerous mistakes and errors with the credits even misspelling the word writing in the credit for writing check. In game, there is a horrible, horrible sound for the boss warning, and some bosses die in such ludicrously quick fashion it can feel quite bizarre. When you respawn, your new ship appears on screen before your old ones vanished, and power-ups that can't be used by certain ships still appear, with power-ups in general seeming random, making certain sections either cakewalk easy or very difficult depending on your luck. Perhaps the issue that most sum things up for me is the dialogue skip in the game's story mode. There is a dialogue skip, so it's obvious that the fact players may want to just get to the action has been noted and something has been done about it. But instead of just jumping to the start of the stage, the game fast forwards through some sections of conversation, then repeatedly stops to put up stage directions like character X has left the scene or offer a dialogue choice. 
choices, by the way, that sometimes will only allow you to select one option, something I have no idea if it's a bug or a deliberate feature, meaning someone who wants to speedily get to the game can't do so, while nothing of use is offered to those playing for the story either. The heart is in the right place, but the implementation is just all wrong, and like so many things with the game, it seems like a bit of outside influence would have done the world of good. In the end, it can all get a bit tiresome, and that is a real shame because there is a potentially decent game on offer here. Or rather, not even potentially, there is one, it's just hard to actually experience it the way it's supposed to be experienced. As you can see, it is a side-scroller, and while the screen can get quite well covered in bullets, for the most part it plays more like a classic shmup than a bullet hell. You have two ships to choose from, the Blue Wing or the Altair, with the Blue Wing giving you a collectible shield, which can be launched as a damage dealing attack similar to the Force Pod in R-Type, and the Altair offering more power and a quickly rechargeable special shot in place of the shield. In practice, I found the Altair to be the far, far better ship, whether playing for score or survival, due to how quickly it can recharge its special, and the fact that the Blue Wing's shield offers a pretty paltry radius of cover. You can also collect and attach two pods to your ship during stages, with these firing lasers that can be rotated using either the shoulder buttons or the right stick. These additional pods are a nice and unusual feature and make for some fun sections where you're using them to shoot enemies above, below or even behind you, while simultaneously using your shot to deal with dangers in front of you. It also allows the game to scroll up and down at times without the usual frustration of struggling to deal with the incoming threats. Bullets can be cancelled, most notably by using the Altair's special weapon, and cancelled bullets are converted into red gems, with this being the game's main scoring system. Timing things nicely to take out a big wave of bullets from a boss can be very satisfying, and when the game is running well, there is certainly a good amount of fun to be had from its systems and mechanics. You can also collect Risk Stars, with these being tallied up separately and used as the game's currency, which can be used to buy extra credits, game modes, and once those more major options have been exhausted, still can be found useful for purchasing all the images in the game's extensive galleries. And the galleries, I think, are so full because, in a lot of ways, I feel like this game was possibly conceived of first and foremost as a place to showcase artistic talents and creative ideas, with it taking the form of a shmup being certainly not incidental to all that, but of perhaps lesser importance. And it really is the visuals where, regardless of your own taste and preferences, you really can see a lot of hard work and effort. And I'm not just talking about the gallery, gallery images, by the way, but the in-game visuals too with everything being hand-drawn, rich with detail, and the backgrounds and boss encounters serving up a good portion of life and drama, and just generally imbuing the whole game with a very distinct and unusual personality. The story is long and detailed with, as mentioned, dialogue choices that lead to different endings, and although I can't say I personally found it very interesting, it may well be a significant bonus for people into that side of things. And with each character having a different journey, it should also significantly aid in replayability. Other than the story mode, there is an arcade mode, a two-player mode, and a boss rush as well as online and local scoreboards, and a sound test where you can listen to the game's quite varied but mostly excellent soundtrack, and all in all, the game certainly offers more than enough bang for your buck in terms of content. Which in many ways only makes its shortcomings all the more frustrating. There most definitely is enjoyment to be had from Wings of Blue Star, and while I said at the top of this review that it's a bit of a tough one to recommend, it's also not one that I would actively recommend against. As mentioned, despite their sheer volume, most of the bugs and issues are minor, and it's only the slowdown and attendant forced restarts that are likely to cause major frustration. Basically, Wings of Blue Star is not a million miles away from being a good game, and if it gets patched, it may well still become one, but at the time of writing, despite its lovingly crafted visuals, interesting ideas, and mostly solid gameplay, I'd only give this a 6 out of 10, and would probably recommend keeping your eye out for news of a patch before making a purchase. I do wonder if that will come though, as this is one that's been out for a long time on Steam, where seemingly a lot of the smaller issues have been carried over from, and it's already seen a significant delay on Switch. Here's hoping though, as there is a physical coming at some point, and it would be nice to have any patches that are applied complete on the card. So do let us know your own thoughts on the game, whether you've already played it on Steam, or are picking up the Switch version, and thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.